If you're confused about imposition or printer spreads, don't worry because so is every other designer. In the last print production video, I explained how to pre-flight your document and export for a printer. In this video, I am covering imposition and printer spreads. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel, your go-to resource from a New York City creative director. You will more than likely not have to worry about this because most printers will do it for you, but I do think it's important for you to understand how it works in the event that you want to print a personal project or even print something in smaller quantities. For me, if a colleague is leaving, I'll often design a mini booklet for them, have it printed at FedEx or Staples, and then bind it myself. This is definitely better explained in person, but I'm gonna do my best virtually. First, imposition is simply the printer setup, which doesn't really have that much to do with design. Second, you have to understand that printers at a plant don't function how your printers do at home. They print on extremely large sheets of paper and then trim down. I've worked on a lot of events and for our larger summits, we would print these program guides, which were roughly 40 pages and we needed 500 copies. So if we do some math, that is 20,000 pages. In order to print this, you would print them in spreads, front and back, so that is 5,000 sheets of paper. Nobody has time to print 5,000 sheets of paper. So instead, printers set up the pages where they can print multiple pages at a time. One setup is considered a form. A form can be 16 pages or 32 pages. It really just depends on your printer. Because of the setup, they're able to save on paper and cut time. Let's start with double-sided printing. Here I have the front and back of one of my business cards. When you print this, the printer will line up a bunch of them so they can trim multiple at the same time. They would be printed in a format similar to this, so this would be one sheet of paper. The number of cards that can fit will depend on your printer and the size of paper that they're printing on. Accordingly, the back would look like this. I said that this was one of my business cards. I have quite a few, but here are four of them. If I were printing these together, the imposition would look something like this with the corresponding fronts on the other side. They would trim the sides as you have them set in your trim marks and you would end up with this. And here are the fronts. A setup like this would allow your printouts to be collated. One thing I wanna call out in the design of the business card is this X. You can see that the position is flipped as well as the color of the strokes, which I did on purpose. If these were two pages next to each other or single-sided, I would keep them exactly the same like this. Flipping the position and colorway was my design decision to connect the front and the back, knowing that it's a mirror effect. So the X will be perfectly lined on both sides. Additional detail of the mirroring is that I made the backs of them full color with white type, and then the front of them in the opposite colorway, white background with colored type. I'm mentioning this because everything is a designed experience and these details give your printed project purpose. They are also details that give me joy in my work, so something to consider for your next design project is to relate the design to the format that it's being printed in. Now we can move on to printer spreads, which is what most people are confused about. If you wanna take a break, grab a water, make a sandwich, feel free. I'm gonna do this once and only once. Of course, you could just rewind the video. I have props for this video. Here I have a magazine insert. It is 12 pages and it is saddle stitched, which means that it was stapled together, but I took out the staples so we could see how this would be printed. It is three sheets of paper and then it's bound in the middle. When you design this, the pages are in order, but when it's printed, it is not. So we can see that page one and then page 12 are printed next to each other. And then this would be page two and page 11. Yes, yes. This is page three with page 10, page four with page nine, page five, page eight, and then page six with page seven. These are also double-sided. The easiest way for me to show you this is through this setup so that we can actually look at the page numbers. So this is how this form is set up. We have four slots, each for a spread, eight pages on one side and eight on the back, 16 pages total. How I'm showing it here is that the light purple are the left-hand pages and then the darker ones are the right-hand pages. I'll show this front and back. Let's start with page one, which is a right-hand page. The opposite of that is the last page, in this case, 16. On the back of page one goes page two, and then next to page two is the second to last page, 15. 
Opposite of page two is page three, and then next to page three will then be 14. The placement may not make sense right now, but it will when I fold it in a little bit, so just stay with me. On the back of page three needs to be page four, so that brings us to the front, and then that is a left-hand page. Next to page four goes page 13. Opposite of four is page five, but now we're on the top. These pages are now upside down. Again, you'll see how this works when I fold it in a bit. Page five goes next to page 12. Behind page five is page six, which is next to page 11. Page seven is opposite of six, and then next to page 10. Last, opposite of seven is page eight, next to page nine, and there's our setup. Does that make sense so far? So again, this is what is considered a form. Note that a printer can't print any of these unless they have all of the pages. I wanna call out something else that if you are printing a saddle stitch book, your page count must be in multiples of four because there's no way to print single pages. Pro tip, if you're designing a brochure or a program guide, and let's say you end up with 21 pages, instead of cutting down to 20, just fill the remaining three pages with lines so that people can write notes on. Again, design the experience. So let's go back to our prop. What's gonna happen here is that the printer is gonna fold the form in half, and then it's gonna fold the form in half again, like this, which I have right here. This is just so you can see. So it's like this, and then we fold it down in half. And then one more time, it's going to fold this way, which I have right here. So we can see how that happens. So just so you know that this is misaligned because it is not folded to the paper. It is folded to the crop marks that I have set up. I printed this at Staples, so they're not gonna center it for me. I wanna show you what's going on here real quick. So we have page one. Behind page one, you have two and three. It's hard to see because it's folded. Um, then we have four and five. Inside here, behind five, you have six and seven. And then you have eight and nine, so on and so forth. So this will be easier to see because let's trim the left side, which I have right here. So now we can see one, two, three. All the pages are in order. Four, five, this is not great on camera, but fine. Let's trim the bottom, which is this one, this one. So we have the bottom aligned. And then lastly, we have, we cut the top, which now all the pages are in order. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm messing this up. But all you have to do is staple this together and then there's your book. So that is printer spreads. It is all I can contribute to this topic, so let's circle back to designing for format. If you're designing a printed project, you should have a full understanding of how it will be printed because things just happen. In that booklet, you can see that there's some misalignment happening here, more than likely because the pages were designed as spreads and then it became misaligned during the imposition stage. In the center spread, they do have a photo going across the middle. Thankfully, this isn't someone's face, but also in the middle is a staple from the binding, so something to consider. I'm saying to take this into consideration from the standpoint of something to watch out for when you're designing, but I'm also saying take it into consideration from the standpoint to maybe you just want to embrace it into the design. Just quickly, if this were my project and I had some free reign, I would like something to pop more and I could do that by using a neon staple. Of course, I would need to redesign the center spread, but the pop of color would be worth it. If you wanted to elevate this even more, you can actually have it threaded instead of stapled as an option. Stapled is totally fine because it's cheap like me. I hope I cleared some things up. If you have any comments, do not comment below because I can't explain this again, so I will see you next time.